Hey, good morning, TFH Oakland. Thank you so much for joining us on this unique and special Sunday morning. Uh, many of you are gathering in different locations throughout Oakland or in your homes, and hopefully you've invited some friends and family to be able to check out our service this morning as we get into another part of our series called Hood and as we talk about dismantling offenses. Uh, as if this is your first time, we do want to welcome you and just say we're so grateful that you chose to give up your Sunday morning to be with us. Uh, I know all of our hosts have hopefully made you feel so welcomed and uh, hopefully you can find family uh, with us. You know, we live so people can experience the goodness of God. Uh, we want people to find community and live out their purpose and live fulfilled and we hope to partner with you uh, throughout this weekend uh, as we're getting ready for a time of worship and the word for the next few moments we're going to sing a couple of songs that put jesus in his accurate and perfect uh, position in our lives and that we're going to talk about god's word and how jesus teaches us and how to deal with offenses but before we do that we do believe in being a generous church being a people that live with an open hand if this is your first time chill out relax uh, but for those, this is your home church. We want to encourage you to continue to give. You can do that on the app or at tfhoakland.org. Um, and we would love to be able to partner with you as we continue to spread not only the gospel, but practical needs are being met through the house. Uh, so thank you so much for all that you do. Without further ado, we're going to spend a few moments, probably about 10 minutes or so, worshiping and singing some songs. And then we're going to unpack God's word. And hopefully by the end of it, we will live out uh, leave and live out what Jesus has called us to do. Uh, so thank you for joining us and let's join in in this time of worship.
and sing your own song to Jesus. For he is worthy, he is mighty, and he is holy. So we describe our love to you. We describe our love to you, Jesus.
Good morning, church. Uh, we are jumping into uh, the word uh, today. So hopefully you are hungry and I want to encourage you, even if you're in your bedroom, your apartment, or maybe you're doing hosting a Zoom session right now, I want to encourage you to say yes and amen. Get your uh, notepad out, get your Bible. Let's take notes uh, and let's begin to literally soak up all that God wants to say us this, to this this morning. Uh, we've been in a series called Hood and that's when servanthood meets our neighborhood. And so I want to spend a few moments to encourage you to continue to establish community. Uh, we believe that Jesus calls us to not only make impact in our Sunday morning experiences, but to make impact in our apartment complexes, in our neighborhood, with the neighbors that live across the street, in our family. And so today we're going to talk about a little bit something that I think all of us are familiar with. I think like never before, we have become more offendable than any generation. Uh, not only through recent polls, which were taken, uh, there was a poll and a survey that was taken, and it surveyed 2,000 people. And of that 2,000 people, over 300 of them had ended a long-term relationship based on political differences. People are offended like never before. I've experienced this for myself. Just a couple of days ago, I called a family member, and I was just calling to check on them. And as I was calling to check on them, uh, we had some bad reception, some things were going down, and we got disconnected. Well, that happened multiple times. And then I tried again a few days later and we got disconnected again. So now I started taking it personally. I'm like, okay, this person don't wanna to talk to me. This person is offended with me. And I started to misinterpret which was bad reception as an offense. And I ended up calling another family member like, hey, I've called this person multiple times to keep disconnecting what's going on and had them check on it for me. And the person ended up calling me back and said, hey, it was just bad reception. I wasn't trying to be offensive. I wasn't trying to ignore you. It's just circumstances. And I think, how many times do we take offense simply based out of bad reception, based out of misinterpreting someone's intention? And we live our lives with this exaggerated understanding. Now, not to belittle, there's some people that have gone through some horrific things and the process of forgiving, the process of understanding that person, you may not even be at that place, but hopefully Jesus will continue to encourage you to do so. But how many times in my life, just based out of circumstances that I misinterpreted someone's actions as something that was encroaching on a particular boundary that offended me? Well, Jesus doesn't shy away from this either. In Matthew 18, Jesus begins to talk to his disciples about how to handle offense. You know, in other states, they don't have fences like we do in California. In California, we like our homes to be separated, to be segmented, to we know this is my property line and your property line. In other states, it's open fences. And I wonder how many times do we put up walls that we think are going to protect us that actually end up hurting us. And Jesus says, before you put up a wall, you need to understand this. In Proverbs, it says this in Proverbs 18, it says a brother offended, that Hebrew word pasha, it's, it's harder to be one than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. What he's saying is, is in the book of Proverbs, this person that's sharing wisdom is saying that a person that has offense, they become so on the defense. They begin to bar themselves. They begin to self preserve themselves from having any kind of animosity coming their way. Offense means to break away. It's the word we get apostasy. It means literally there is a separation. I'm walking away from you. And in Greek, this word offense means scandal or scandal. It means bait and trap. All of my Kerry Washington fans are like freaking out right now but it means to identify something that is tantalizing, something that is desirable, and you reach out for it, and before you know it, it's got you trapped. We call that clickbait. When you see something that seems intriguing, and I wanna know more about that, and then when you click onto it, you realize this is probably one of the most toxic videos that I could watch. I feel totally slimed right now, and that's exactly how fence works. It taps into our ego, our pride, uh, of our boundaries, and some things that it does, it pulls us, it sucks us in until we realize this is not where I want to be. Well, Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, expressing the love of God on earth, begins to teach his disciples, those that follow Jesus, of what it looks like, not if you are offended, but when you are offended. He says in eight, Matthew 18, verse 5, he says, if another believer sins against you, offends you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, 
you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. What Jesus is teaching his disciples, he says this, if someone offends you, go to them. He says, go with the intention of trying to restore that relationship, not to prove that you're right. You see, according to recent studies, we've seen more offense that has happened than ever before. People are on the fence about vaccination or no vaccination. People are on the fence of what should we do about this policy or that policy. We are so overwhelmed with so much toxicity that we have no idea how not to be offended. There are so many offensive things that are coming at us all at one time. And now sometimes we try to take public offense that was actually a personal offense. And Jesus says, no, no, no. Sometimes you can't handle all of the offenses out there. What about the offenses that is close to home that are dealing with you? So what do we do with our offense? The first thing that we need to understand is this. We need to do it God's way by knowing what God wants. If we are going to handle and be mature people that follow the teachings of Jesus, we have to do it God's way. In the same way, it says this, it is not my heavenly father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. In Matthew 18, 14, Jesus goes and he teaches his disciples that God's desire is that one of us would perish or fall short or fall away from God. God's intention is always to preserve. God's intention is always to create a way. False religion, legalism always wants to separate and marginalize people, but God always says, I want you to come close. And if we are going to handle offense, we have to be willing to do it God's way. You see, you have to ask yourself this question, what is the offense? What boundary was crossed? What, what sin was done against me? And do I actually have the motivation that if I am so offended, do I have the desire to win that person back? Do I want that person to actually be a part of my community, be a part of my squadron, be a part of my friends? But what happens when we do it our way versus doing it God's way, it only increases hatred and anger. Man, there's a recent story that actually happened in the Bay Area where there were two neighbors that got into some, like literally a war. One was a geophysicist and the other two were lawyers, a husband and a wife. And because of property lines, because of a fence line, animosity continued to increase. They, one person began to block their property line with a car and then the next neighbor actually put a two-ton boulder to replace their vehicle. And before they knew it, two of the neighbors were shot by a shotgun, shotgun by the geophysicist when the police did a report. The crazy thing is, is this, this is not in some third world country. This is happening down the street, that this level of animosity, this level of offense, these fences that we have created to protect ourselves, that people say, I will get what I want. And when we do it our way, someone always ends hurt more than when we started. You see, when God is teaching us how to handle offense, it ultimately will end in reconciliation and grace and forgiveness, and sometimes we don't have the privilege of that, that forgiveness being reciprocated, but when we do it our way, it only makes matters worse. You see, many times we react and respond the way we were raised rather than the way we were saved. I'll say that again. Many times we react to offense the way that we were raised rather than the way that we were saved. And what I mean by that is this. The Bible talks that Jesus came incarnate, the love of God, and that God expressed his character and his nature, his devotion towards us, that while we were still sinners, while we were still offensive to God, that he loved us. He made a way for us. He left the light on for us. That's the way that we were saved. That's the way that you can be saved. It's by God's love. But many times when we deal with an offense, it's the way that we were raised. Just this morning, I was having a cup of coffee and a door literally swung open and hit me right in the face. And it was my wife on the other end of that door. Everything in me wanted to destroy our home. And I literally just screamed in anger and walked away. 
Now, some of you be like, man, that's pretty good. Others be like, Pastor Jules got a little bit of uh, repressed anger issues. But what I've had to learn is that many times offenses will happen out of nowhere. And someone's intention of coming close or coming in sometimes turns into a catastrophic event. And in those moments, we have to choose. Am I going to respond in God's way or in my way? You see, what did Jesus do for us? He came to us, for us. While we were in scandal, Jesus took on our offenses. So how do we handle an offense? I'm going to give you a couple of ideas, and we're going to close in prayer. And what I'm going to ask God is that God would illuminate some of the areas in which your life, where you have become offended, and it is robbing you of the fulfillment, it is robbing you of joy, it, is, it has separated you from family members. You see, how do we handle offense? The first thing that we have to understand is this. Sometimes we have to bear an offense, not bottle it. You see, many times there's people in our family that have offended us. I know uh, in, even in my family, there are some parental stuff that happened to where, you know, kids can't talk to dads and all of these things. And what happens is, is that as a Christ follower, when you're following the life of Jesus, the way that we save Jesus, he bore our offenses. That means to take on unto oneself. That means that you may be the only one that is mature in the situation to be able to rectify, be able to reconcile, be able to do something about it. But the person on the other side is immature or maybe weak and unable to follow through what is necessary in order for both parties to walk out feeling love, feeling mutual connection, seeing restoration. But here's the thing. When you're walking through a situation where you are offended, it is not God's will that you bottle it because once you begin to bottle that offense, you begin to take on the toxicity of that offense and that offense becomes a filter in the way that you see the rest of your relationships, the way that you see the world. You see, when Jesus, when he bore the most offensive thing, which was a cross, which would have been the equivalent of an electric chair, when he bore that kind of shameful death, what he did is he carried it for a moment and he took it to the place where he was able to relinquish it to God. You see, there are moments where you carry an offense, but you have to take it to God. And Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary, all who are bearing heavy loads and release and trust me to make that exchange. The second point is this, don't fall for the trap. The word for offense in Greek is the word we get scandal in and where we get the word scandal from. Now, when we talk about scandal, we think of, ooh, president. We think of, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. But scandal is simply a trap, something that entices us that we think something is going to be so good if I just do this. And when we reach out, when we make that purchase, when we begin to do something that's out of pocket, it actually has reverse ramifications it begins to bite back. You see, God has a way. When we do it our way, it, it spreads more hatred and animosity. So how do we fall for the trap of offense? The first way that we try to fall, or we usually fall for the trap, is we bottle it. We get offended and we just contain it. We hold it to ourselves. We're like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna not gonna say anything. And honestly, many times that is an insecurity. I know for me that whenever I come into that situation, I don't like to offend someone. I want people to be happy. I want people to feel good. And so I avoid, and therefore by avoiding the issue, I bottle it. And we've seen it all too many times that the marriage that ends up ending in some kind of cal calamity or it ends in violence and physical abuse are all ramifications because someone bottled an offense rather than addressing it. The way that we see people fall for the trap is they begin to spread the offense. They begin to say, hey, can't you believe what this person has done? Can you believe if we're going to stop the spread? See, many times people get offended personally and they try to address it on a public platform like social media. And that is the worst thing that you can do, because what you're doing is then you begin to spread the offense. And what happens so many times is we become offended by someone else's offense. So therefore, I'm standing in proxy with you now that you're offended and I'm indirectly offended because I'm listening to you and I love you and I care for you. And remember, this happens, happens so often in relationships that rather than not falling for the trap, we find our hands being bitten off. 
of something that we thought was going to end well and actually has reverse effects. So how does Jesus tell us to break, to dismantle the trap? He says this, if someone offends you, go to them privately and point out the offense. What Jesus tells us so gut-wrenching. It seems so easy. So Jesus, I'm supposed to go to them and just talk about it? Yes. But here's the thing, with the intentions of winning them back. You see, what Jesus is teaching us and teaching his disciples is not if we are offended, it's when we are offended. And Jesus says very clearly, go to that person privately. We have lost the art of having personal, private interaction and being able to trust and be trusted in a way that we can address an issue of offense and move on. You see, if we continue to live a life where we try to take public statements and we begin to personalize them, and then we begin to spread those offenses to so many other people, we will never create the the discipleship that Jesus is calling us to live, to live a life that even when we experience offense, we know how to handle it quickly and address it before it becomes bottled, before we spread it, Jesus says, go to them privately. See, many times we're looking for a soundboard, and there are moments where we do need advice. Hey, can you help me to understand? But the intention is extremely important. I have to ask, God, what is my motivation for addressing this offense? You see, what we see happening in our world for so many times is that offense is running rampant. And Jesus had an offense with someone. You see, the verse of scripture we're about to read deals with a guy by the name of Peter, who actually was probably one of the most vocal uh, disciples in the Bible. He said a lot of things, a lot of inappropriate things, so I can definitely relate to him. And Peter said so many things. But one thing that Peter was known for was for denying Jesus. At the moment that Jesus needed a friend, most, I mean, like, unlike any other time, it was a time where Jesus was praying before he was about to go to the cross. Peter falls asleep on him. And not only that, as Jesus is about to go to the cross, Peter denies any relationship, any association with Jesus. And after the offense, after the pain, after Peter had did all that he had done, what does Jesus do? Jesus shows up at Peter's work. He begins to be by the Sea of Galilee. And he begins to ask Peter if he truly loves him. Jesus addresses the offense. And what Peter writes is a person that was on the other side of of the offense that experienced grace and compassion when he didn't deserve it. 1 Peter 3.8 says this, Finally, everyone must live in harmony. Be sympathetic. Love each other. Have compassion. Be humble. Don't pay people back with evil for the evil that they do to you or ridicule those who ridicule you. Instead, bless them because you were called to inherit a blessing. People who want to live a full life and enjoy good days must keep their tongues from saying evil things and their lips from speaking deceitful things. People who want to live a life, a full life, and enjoy good days. Could it be that our good days ahead are determined by the way that we handle conflict right now? Could it be the hope, the future that we have in God is clearly reserved for the way that we handle and dismantle conflict in our earthly relationships. I want to encourage you this morning that many of you have been offended and you have bottled that offense or you have spread that offense rather than going to that person and addressing the offense in a private, compassionate, sympathetic, humble way that Peter calls us to do. What would it look like to be on the other side of that kind of grace? What would it look like to be on the other side of that kind of compassion that Jesus shows us that while we were in scandal, while we were falling for traps over and over and over, he still loved us. This morning, can I encourage you, don't fall for the trap. You see, many of us, we've fallen for the trap. Out of 2,000 people, over 300 have ended a relationship based on politics or policies. And I'm sure all of us can attest the people that we had to unfollow, the people that we had to push away, the people that we had to step aside from. 
can I encourage you that in your attempt to protect yourself, ask yourself this question. Did I do it God's way? Or did I fall for the trap? You see, I think God may be calling many of us. Sometimes we're dealing with people that aren't as mature, that don't believe in God, and they offend us. And we have to ask ourselves, how should I address it? And I believe in many ways it is the same, to deal with the matter that's at hand and to be open and to be honest and to be compassionate. You see, I think God wants to bring freedom into our lives. And so this morning, I hope this message encourages you and invites you to take the invitation that Jesus presents to us, to take on that, that, that fresh invite that Jesus says, come to me that have been bottling it. Come to me that have been contaminated by this offense, and I will give you rest. I want to pray for two groups of people as we close. The first group of people is this. You would say, Pastor Jules, my life, I think it offends God. I've been doing things that, that, that aren't right. And there's something in me that wants to be close to God. The Bible is very clear. Jesus loves us while we were far away. And the Bible says to make an exchange. Literally, to take the power of our heart, of our confession, begin to say, God, will you forgive me? God, I'm coming to you personally, privately, and asking for an exchange of my brokenness, my past, for the life that you have for me. Another group of people is this. You say, Pastor Jules, I know God, but I don't like people. <laughs> Just probably most of us. God, I have a problem with people, and this person has offended me. God, give me the wisdom, give me the ability, the courage to be able to extend forgiveness. I want to pray for you. And if you're in one of our locations, you can talk to any of our hosts. They have a connect table for you to be able to take that next step. Begin to say, hey, I want to follow Jesus. I need to find community. However that may be, I'm going to pray for you and ask that God would continue to help you on your journey of following Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word today. And if you're far away from God, everybody, you can close your eyes if you're uh, in an environment with other people. But if you just say, hey, I'm far away from God, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, please forgive me, wash me, make me new. If my life has been offensive to you, Lord, forgive me. I want to come close. If you prayed that prayer, a number of our team members would love to connect with you, give you a Bible, help you on the next step. But you say, hey, Pastor Jules, I'm, I'm in that second group. I'm far away from God. or I've had this offense and it's affecting other relationships. And I need the courage to address it. God, I pray that you would give us the strength and the courage to be people that love and serve our neighborhoods, to serve the people that we interact with. Give us the patience, the endurance, and let us work hard to see reconciliation. Let us work hard to see those broken relationships restored by your grace. Lord, we love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Hey, I want to thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday morning. Hopefully this message has been encouraging and also practical for you to take those next steps. If you're at one of our locations or maybe you're watching online for the first time, we would love for you to check out our link tree, which gives you all of the different options on how to find a group, how to stay connected and how to show up for our services, which will be happening in person at 930 at the Scottish Rite Center. Uh, it's right on Lake Merritt. So feel free to bring your family and kids. We would love to connect with you and meet you in person. But we love you so much. And it's been such an honor to have this conversation with this morning. And we hope to see you uh, at, at the Scottish Rite Center. God bless you guys. And we will see you soon.